If you've ever traveled to a desert, you might find it difficult to believe that the desert were once oceans, yet they were. It becomes even more difficult to accept the notion of desert as oceans in a certain era, when there's an extreme limitation to access of running water in present day, even for the basics such as to shave, wash yourself, or take a shower. However, the ingenuity of the great man-made river altered a country's destiny by bringing water to the middle of the desert. According to scientists, the fossil aquifer from which this water is being supplied is the Nubian sandstone aquifer system. It accumulated during the last ice age and is not currently being replenished. If 2007 rates of retrieval rate of water from the aquifer are not increased, the water could last a thousand years. However, other independent expects estimates indicate that the aquifer could be depleted of water in as soon as 60 to 100 years. Join us in our video today, as we bring you the hidden rivers under the Sahara Desert that changed Libya, in a project estimated at over $25 billion. Libya is a country that epitomizes this daring innovation. People living near the Sahara Desert did not have access to clean water which is essential for survival. Libya's ex-president Muammar Gaddafi devised a brilliant answer to the crisis and launched the world's largest water project, which has transformed the lives of millions of people. He called it the eighth wonder of the world, and perhaps rightfully so. The Great Man-Made River Project, the world's largest engineering endeavor, involving the abstraction of ancient groundwater from the Sahara Desert and the transportation of water over hundreds of kilometers to the coast of Libya supplying water to the country's 5.6 million population, as well for irrigation of farm lands. The Libyan Great Man-Made River has a long history that involves a phenomenal engineering process that resulted in one of the most significant civil engineering projects to impact life. Gaddafi's wish seems to have come true, bringing water to one of the world's harshest climate regions. According to analysts, the cost of the $25 billion groundwater extraction system is 10% that of desalination, making it one of the cheapest alternatives to bringing water to a desert region. However, although this is a huge step forward in terms of quality of life, the project wasn't easy. The narrative began in 1953 when the government attempted to uncover new oil reserves in the Sahara Desert. They discovered a significant water source that had been existing since the Ice Age, which surprised many of the engineers. The source was known as the Nubian Sandstone Aquifer System, and it had been waiting in the desert for thousands of years to make people's lives simpler. Four significant subsurface basins exist, including the Kufr Basin, located in the southeast near the Egyptian border which comprises 350,000 square kilometers and forms a 2,000-meter deep aquifer layer with a capacity of 20,000 square kilometers in the Libyan sector. The Sirt Basin's 600-meter deep aquifer is thought to retain more than 10,000 square kilometers of water, while the Mersuk Basin, 450,000 square kilometers south of Jabal Fezzan, is thought to hold 4,800 square kilometers. The Hamada and Kufr Basins, which stretch from the Kargaf Arch and Jabal Sada to the coast, contain even more water. The Great Man-Made River Project commenced in 1984 after being planned in the late 1960s, but due to how difficult it was to finish in a short amount of time, they segmented it into five sections. Gaddafi's regime supported the project, and on August 1991, the first and largest phase was formally launched carrying 2 million cubic meters of water per day via a 1,200-kilometer pipeline from As-Safir and Tazaro to Benghazi and finally Sirte, through the Ajabia Reservoir. This was a large project that required 85 million cubic meters of excavation and used a quarter million sections of concrete pipe, 2.5 million tons of cement, 13 million tons of aggregate, 2 million kilometers of pre-stressed wire, and a total cost of $14 billion. The Tazargo well field, which includes both production and piezometric observation wells, produces roughly 1 million cubic meters per day at a rate of 120 liters per second per well. Only 98 of the 108 producing wells are operational, with the remaining ones on standby. 
A collection system transports the water to an offline steel header tank with a capacity of 170,000 cubic meters. The main conveyance system is then transported 256 kilometers north to Sarir, where two comparable header tanks house the second phase one well field. A total of 1 million cubic meters is produced here, with 114 of the 126 production, wells averaging 102 liter per second per well. Tazerbo and Sari wells are approximately 450 meters deep and are supplied with submersible pumps at a depth of 104 to 5 meters. Two parallel, 4-meter diameter pipelines transport the chlorine-treated water from Sarir to the 4 million cubic meter Ajdabia holding reservoir, 380 kilometers north. Two pipes carry water from this 900-meter diameter reservoir, one traveling west to Sirt and the other north to Benghazi. Each pipeline empties into a circular earth embankment and reservoir, which has a storage capacity of 6.8 million cubic meters in Sirt and 4.7 million cubic meters in Benghazi, and was designed to balance supply and demand changes. In addition, massive reservoirs, 37 million cubic meters in the Sirt area and 76 million cubic meters in Benghazi have been erected to serve as storage facilities during the summer drought. The second phase, however, transports 1 million cubic meters of water every day from the Fezzan region to the fertile Jafara plain on the western coastal belt, as well as Tripoli. The system begins at Sarir Kadusa with a well field of 127 wells distributed along three east-west collector pipelines, eventually feeding a 28 million cubic meter terminal reservoir at Sukal Ahad. The third phase was split into two sections, with the first covering for the anticipated extension of the existing phase one system which added an additional 1.68 million cubic meters per day, as well as 700 kilometers of new pipelines and pumping stations, bringing the total capacity to 3.68 million cubic meters per day. Furthermore, it provided water to Tabruk and the seashore through a new well field at Al Jagbab. This necessitated the construction of a reservoir south of Tabruk, as well as the installation of an additional 500 kilometers of pipeline. The preliminary engineering and design contract, which includes geotechnical and topographical surveys, was scheduled to last 41 months. The project's final two phases extended the first phase system southward to well fields in the Al Kufr region, constructing a pipeline from wells near Gadames in the western desert to the coastal cities of Al Zwiya and Zura west of Tripoli, and joining the great man made River 1 and 2 systems. The project cost more than $25 billion, and the government paid for it without the assistance of foreign banks or other countries. It required goods, therefore some were brought by sea from Korea, while the rest were manufactured in Libya. The United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization is committed to training the engineers and technicians responsible for the project's day-to-day -day operations. With all phases completed, the GMR overall capacity would be around 6.5 million cubic meters of water each day, and a total of 4,000 kilometers of the pipeline would be included in the network. On 22 July 2011, during the first Libyan civil war, one of the two plants making pipes for the project, the Brega plant, was hit by a NATO airstrike. At press conference on 26 July, NATO claimed that rockets had been fired from within the plant area and that military material, including multiple rocket launchers, was stored there according to intelligence findings, presenting a photo showing a BM-21 MRL as an example. Between 2014 to 2020, the water infrastructure suffered neglect and occasional breakdowns due to the Libyan civil war. As of July 2019, 101 out of 479 wells on the Western Pipeline system had been dismantled. Agriculture is now possible in desert areas thanks to huge freshwater flows from the Great Man-Made River. The government put money into seven large agricultural projects. One is located south of Tripoli, Libya's capital. This project in the Jafara Plains spans 3,300 hectares and includes 665 farms. These farms grow a variety of citrus fruits, wheat, barley, and vegetables. There were intentions to grow millions of palm trees further south but recent conflict has hampered progress. Before establishing a big project, Libyan law requires that an environmental impact assessment be completed. However, as Khalifa Lodge, 
an advisor to the General Board of Environment, points out, no assessment was ever undertaken in the case of the Great Man-Made River. The political decision to begin was made in response to an acute shortage of water. The cost of fossil water was only one-tenth that of desalinated water at the time. To date, the environmental impact evaluation is still incomplete. Contrary to popular belief, Libya's riches aren't defined by its oil, but this North African nation is the steward of one of the most essential resources ever. To be able to provide potable water or water for irrigation anywhere in the world is quite a feat, but to do it in the dry and exposed, sand dune-filled desert is an unbelievable undertaking. This engineering spectacle, its visionary schemers, and the numerous engineering experts who labored on it deserve enormous recognition. If you enjoyed this video, watch the next video on your screen, which looks into scientists' terrifying new discovery under the Sahara Desert. As always, give our video a like and subscribe to our channel for more exciting future videos.